Welcome back. This is Black and White, where we talk about social issues affecting each and every one of us. And to start as, well, to start as off, KTN News has exposed the rot in the Child Welfare Society of Kenya that has allegedly been exploiting children through plunder of state resources. But here, is how, here now is a brief snippet of the special feature that ran on KTN News a few days ago. <laughs> Minors in children's homes under the care of Child Welfare Society of Kenya around the country have suffered in silence. <laughs> the hope of homeless children left to live under the shadows of a government agency is fading away in despair. After a six-month investigation, the lead can now reveal how close to half a billion Kenya shillings meant to take care of less fortunate children ended up in the pockets of a few individuals. Out there, if anybody is listening, please, this kid needs help. This is the broken story of children dependent on the state. The story of greed, corruption, and betrayal of the trust of one of Kenya's most vulnerable population. Now the full, uh, sh uh, rather episode of that of the lead shows the exploitation, child abuse, mistreatment of even ill children who are under the care of the state. And the uh, development to that particular story on page three of the standard, we're being told, and it's a story that we ran, uh, ran earlier. Welfare fights back. Now the Child Welfare Society of Kenya chairperson Shakila Abdallah has distanced herself from um, the child neglect allegations that have rocked the state, and of course that has been. Con condemned by one of our panelists, one in Geshu County women representative, Gladys Bosholet, who said if she indeed was feeling like she had been left in the dark, then she should have stepped aside just to pass across the message that not everything is being done to um, protect the children of this country. Now, joining the conversation, I have Benjamin Zulu, who is a clinical psychologist, as well as uh, Jennifer Kaberi, who is the founder and CEO of Mtoto News. Welcome to the show, lady and gent. It's a pretty saddening news that are making the headlines across board when you see children, very ill children, being subjected to treatments that are questionable, they're sleeping on the floor. I mean, we even wonder what kind of people are going to come out in the next generation after coming up in this sort of really sordid environment and going through this very, this kind of neglect. And I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Zulu. What is the psychological impact on a child who has to grow up in such conditions? Uh, I think the tricks. One, mm -hmm. We need to mention that uh, this is a very good topic that has been brought up. Yes. I think it has been long overdue. Yeah. Allow me, uh, Nichanganye, yeah, me na too. other kids mm -hmm. who are not in institutions. Yes. Because they are the majority. Mm -hmm. um, what was what was uh, focused on is very important. True. And because it's been discussed, let me come to the children in our homes. Yes. We have children in our homes home because you know in this society. Mm -hmm. The primary caregivers are also working. Yeah. The mothers are working. So we hire assistants mm -hmm. to help us out of necessity. Right. Now, what you realize in that, uh, there's a, that video that was being, uh, you know, around. Circulated and that uh, the mother said when she came home, mm -hmm. she noticed that the child wanted to talk. Mm -hmm. Let me begin by saying that the first step to protecting our children is having communication. Uh -huh. The mother had a habit. Mm -hmm. Akikuja nyumbani joni, mm -hmm. anazunguza na mtoto. Right. Ni wangapi wakikuja nyumbani, they don't have time for it. Mm -hmm. My colleague has that habit of, akifika nyumbani, yata kama kijana melala, mm -hmm. ataenda amusalimie, you know, mm -hmm. the boy doesn't mind ukimuamusha. Yes. Ati yes. umusalimie, mm -hmm. alafu anasema na muambea adiwa lale. Mm -hmm. But that day, he noticed, she noticed that the boy was unhappy. Uh -huh. And then, akamchukua wakenda kwake waongea ongea and all that. Mm -hmm. He realized, she realized that the house of that day had, had really punished the boy, intimidated the boy. Yes. But the house people denied and the boy can't tell a story. Mm -hmm. So what you do is to observe. So mm -hmm. she observed that she was able, I'll be able to finish the story how she traced it. Kwa hivyo, jambo la kwanza ni watoto tulionao nyumbani kuwe na hiyo habit ya kuzungumuza na ye. Yes. The best person who can tell you what's happening in their lives is a child. child the, the other thing not, we are going to talk about is body language because mm -hmm. children can't talk verbally like we are talking. Yes. They don't have a lot of vocabulary. Mm. But 
wa mama they can tell the kind of even a cry the child yeah. is giving mm -hmm. they can tell when a child this is okay is emotionally mm -hmm. but our lives are getting busier and busier yes so i think the most children are in our homes mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. discuss how to yeah. protect them yeah because yeah. the ones who are being uh, the ones exposed to the lead are those who are institutions meant to protect them yes. but of course given that they are under the administrations they can't really come out but we have situations where are in, uh, it's happening inside the home and the video he's talking about is one of a woman who came home to a child that had been abused by the or at, an attempted abuse by the house help and sh through her communication she was able to figure out that this lady was trying to make the kid act in certain ways and sexually exploit him but he was smart enough to tell the mom and actually um, communicate what was asked of him and, and the big compliment no. there goes, goes to the mom yes kwa sababu kabla shida it okay alikuwa na huo mtindo wa kuzungumza na kijana umeshindaje what happened today tulichezana nani but what do we do we think our kids are innocent unamwambia enda ucheze na huko enda ulale na huko you know yeah 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 so first of all communication but then of course when on the institutions part you are the founder of um mtoto news could you tell us what you work on in terms of protecting kids and and how you help that and of course when you see this expose coming out and kids are literally at the mercy of, of adults who are not looking out for their best interest what comes to mind so uh, at mtoto news yeah. uh, we work to make sure children have a voice mm. that children are able to speak for themselves yes. so we empower them to be able to speak for themselves and ask the right questions yeah. so um talking about this expose one it's uh, these children don't have a voice they don't the, the, the path that you are shown is children who are children who have cerebral palsy yes. or children who have some sort of disability. Or so for them, autism. When, yeah, or autism. Yeah. These children, one, they are non-verbal. You know, they were born non-verbal, mm. so they are not able to speak for themselves. Right. So as an institution, my background is child development. Mm. And children with that, they need extra care, yeah. you know. And that's why probably they were taken into that institution mm -hmm. because the parents thought they were yeah. going to get that extra they care that they, that they, what they were going to get at home. Mm -hmm. But when you see they were being given a concussion in porridge, like one drug fits all, mm -hmm. which is not possible, you know. Like cerebral palsy uh, is different from every child. Yes. So you cannot say that this drug is going to treat all children. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why you go to the doctor and one will be given one times three, another one will be given one times two or yeah. half times one. Yeah. So it, it, for me, it's sad. Mm -hmm. And the, the kind of abuse these children went through, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very big on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So I had taken my phone ready to tweet, but mm -hmm. I saw the first scene. I could yeah. not. I just put my phone down. I said, what, what on earth? Who yeah. can be able to put a child through, through such pain? And for me, it's not just physical pain. You know, with that thing they were rubbing the child with. It's the emotional pain. You know, that child, as soon as they see that door, being nonverbal does not mean they don't they understand don't feel, yeah. or, or they don't see. Mm -hmm. As soon as they see that door, they start crying because they can actually imagine the kind of pain they are going to go through. Mm -hmm. And then the psychological pain the, 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 throughout the night and everything, mm -hmm. and then emotional pain, the detachment, the fact that they are not living at home. Yes. They don't have parents. Mm -hmm. That means they're feeling, probably, if my parents were the ones who are taking care of me, mm -hmm. I would not That'd go through better. that pain. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, and you know, there's lots of research that shows that institutions are not good for children. So they are going through so much levels of pain mm -hmm. at a very young age, mm -hmm. and an institution that has been, one, given the mandate by government, yeah. two, given the resources three have trained social workers mm -hmm. can be able to treat children like that for me i thought that is the lowest of the law mm -hmm. someone can be able to go yeah and yeah. what came out largely is that there are monies and allocations that have been given yeah. and therefore these children should be living much better lives but this is just a shadow of what they're living and when you hear the child welfare society of kenya chairperson shakila abdallah saying that she has just been hanging around the corridors because her hands are tied she cannot operate what what comes to mind? To be, I work in the children's sector. Yeah. And yesterday was the first time I ever saw her. <laughs> I will be very honest, and because we have been demanding for governance, you know, mm -hmm. because that that the organisation has been existing since 1956, yes. and it was doing an awesome job, right. you know, and so for for me it's the first time. So if she really really mm -hmm. means that, mm -hmm. she is the chair. Yeah. Chairs are supposed to speak out, speak out do, and do fire something. people. I yes. don't know why mm -hmm. she she said should have she written a letter as a chair and mm -hmm. fire and, and fired people yes. and people to do something or as a uh, uh, honourable Shulay. 
Claire has said, mm -hmm. step down and mm -hmm. said, you know what? I can't do this. Yeah, yes, I cannot be part of abusing children. So for me, I, I just I just feel she has she has the mandate, mm. but she's not exercising it. Mm. Same as two other institutions, yeah. the National Council for Children's Services. Mm -hmm. They have the mandate of monitoring ch children rights and child abuse in this country. Yeah, and right. by yesterday, they would have given a statement Absolutely. on what is the state of children in this country yes. and yeah. what needs to be done. And mm -hmm. the Department of Children's Services, they should have been there to rescue those children. I, if, I, you know, if that was a private institution mm -hmm. or a charitable institution, they would have not even slept. They would have gone there and rescued all those children, removed and closed that institution. But because it's... We've not seen such, in the, not unless I've missed something, but, you know... They do. Have, yeah. They yeah. do that. If it's a private institution mm -hmm. and you exposed like that, mm -hmm. they'll be there the following day, yeah. rescuing and removing children. But yeah. they have not done that. Yeah, that's that. what I'm saying. We've not they seen have, any yes, of that, we're, unless we're, I've missed it. No, no, the no, news, they have not they done. Haven't. I'm saying yeah. they need so, to do something so I'm about looking, it. You've talked about communication, and this child who has mm. autism and cere cerebral palsy yeah. cannot communicate. All mm. he can do is scream. And those are very haunting screams, just telling of the pain that is going through. Uh, he is going through. What is going through the mind of this kid in your view as a clinical psychologist? One. And the effects of that sort of treatment. Very good. Let's start your tricks by saying that our society should move from stigmatizing, being ashamed of children who are born with, yeah. with psychological problems. Okay. We need to realize that just because a child is limited, they cannot express themselves, mm. does not mean they don't feel, because they feel all the emotions. They're in there. In fact, um, if I were to take you to part of, like in the West, some of the best experts we had, like one lady who was born with autism, mm. was better with communicating to animals ah. than human beings. <laughs> Do, yeah. Can you imagine she advanced the science of animal care mm -hmm. and broke records? Mm -hmm. She demanded to assume Kenya and come back. You know, autism, yes. or palsy are good for nothing. Yes. Kwa to know view kama mzigo. Kule nyumbani wana fitwa. Unapata wageni wakikuja ule mtoto amefitwa. We are even ashamed to say that this is my child. Mm -hmm. We even associate them to witchcraft, <laughs> superstition, yes. tulirogwa. Mm -hmm. Pastor niombe, hii ni mapepo. <laughs> <laughs> we begin, we yeah. need to begin Instead to of understand. Instead treatment. Yes, we, yeah. be, we need to begin to understand that these kids are not good for nothing. They have a gift. Mm. In fact, um, part of the principles we teach parents is this. Uh, as the child grow, you grow with them. Yeah. There's something you learn by them. Because some of them, we, we take them to institutions, as she's saying, because we are ashamed of them, not yeah. because we are not able. Mm. And she has mentioned a very key thing. Institutions are not good. Mm -mm. In fact, studies have shown, and even uh, she will tell you that even to, now you can't do children's home mm -hmm. to beyond a certain extent. Okay. She will tell you that the uh, keeping children in institutions have become limited. Yes. I would like to encourage us that mm -hmm. it's better to employ somebody. The money you would be paid to institutions, mm -hmm. <laughs> she would give us more figures. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's more expensive yeah. than if you hire someone to take care of the kid at home. Kwa hivyo, familia zetu ziache kuona kama lazima tupeleke mtoto kwa institutions. Mm. Na tumezema jambo la kwanza, tukubalini kwamba huyu mtoto anapaswa kuwa duniani. Mm. Tuache kumwaibikia na kumuambea na kumpeleka kwa mganga na funny things. <laughs> no. Yeah. And secondly, in the, in the western places where they have grown, yes. those kids are helped to explore. Like that lady, she had so much, she would hug animals. She would go to a cattle dip na nasema, aingizo mahali uh, Mm -hmm. And she was able to tell them, this is too squeezing, I can feel it. You know? much, yeah. and, and she was able to revolutionize the, the, So these kids have gifts mm -hmm. to Akubali. Number two, let's not go to institutions thinking is the solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clearly that one was not a solution. Because yes. these kids are sleeping on the floor, they're, they're, they're cold. They're, and, and when you see the handling, the, how, the grip on his head, his, his legs as they're trying to do the acupuncture, mm -hmm. why is this the option for, for treatment when there are ways of treating kids that are legitimate? You're a clinical psychologist. I mean, acupuncture and all this TCM and what have you are viewed as alternative. Yes. Yeah, they're not the main sources of treatment. Yes. So when a kid who has so, those sorts of needs is subjected to alternative treatments rather than the main the source main of treatment. treatment, what happens to them? One, this child grows feeling rejected. Mm. Because some of the treatment take them through so much pain. Yeah. Now, we need to touch to I need to mention to you that mm. after food and the breathing, yes. the next best important thing for a child is attachment. Attachment. Mm. The, the attachment they develop to the primary caregiver, mostly usually the mother. Yeah. That when 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 they deliver a child, they ask you to.
to skin to skin. Yes. That contact Bonded. is very important. Mm. So the child, all the way to past 10 years, they'll be depending on the attachment they have on the mother. Ukimutua mikononi mwako mpeani kwa watu ingine ambao wana personal care na wawo, what you are doing with the child is you are teaching them that they are in nuisance, they are rejection and all mm. that. Na kuna mtu, mtu walianika kitabu kwa sema hakuna, hakuna mtoto haramu kitendo ni chwa haramu. Yeah. You are teaching the child that they were maybe not wanted and all that. So emotionally they will feel tormented. Right. They will feel rejected. Mm -hmm. And you need to know that we, we, we have been saying that watoto is the future of tomorrow. They are the mm -hmm. future of today. Mm -hmm. What you are planting them today, children are like wet concrete. Mm. What we are doing in them today is what we reap from them tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes, mm. uh, my wife is teaching some and she had mutoto akijibizana na mamake yeah. akitumwa na mjibu vibaya mm -hmm. so she was so hurt personally akisema wazazi bila ku realize when you grow up an, a child in a, in a maladaptive way okay. you're punishing the whole society huyu mtoto ataishi kwa nyumba yako <laughs> they go that they steal from people yeah. cause chaos and all that so mm -hmm. when we dump children to institutions or we be, we behave in a way that like we don't want them mm -hmm. we are doing more harm not only to ourselves but to the to the larger society mm -hmm. na nika nikamwambia go and tell that mother nimwambia go ongelesho mama mwambie huyu mtoto hata acha kuwa wako yeah. utazeeka akiwa mtoto wako mm -hmm. na chochote kinachomtendekea kitakuwa kita affect yes. whether they are doing well or they are doing badly so when we tr we subject these this children to painful modes of treatment when there was alternative yeah. na she will tell you that the first the first kind of treatment for children is care yeah. the, the, the love they are given mm -hmm. promotes their development mm -hmm. how many kids do we have today who are born and you might remember that uh, richard branson that guy of virgin atlantic yes. has a problem reading disability mm -hmm. where is the reading disability in all the billions he has yeah exactly we should stop categorizing our children mm -hmm. and help them explore who they are i'm happy they are changing the curriculum mm -hmm. to stop grading children in terms of air and i'm sure jennifer will tell you that <laughs> yes. i'm sure now she hates the statement my boys are uh, airplane 400 material and all that mm -hmm. yeah it's about finding what the child is good at, good at yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and developing it yes. so moving forward how would you ideally have as our systems change to cater for the needs of our children especially those who are underprivileged like the ones we, we so, highlighted num number one yeah we have a children's bill that mm -hmm. has been ready since 2017 yeah but it's somewhere between the AG's office and the cabinet secretary's office. Mm -hmm. So for me, as a first action, is making sure that we have a children's act by, 20, by the end of this year. Right. Because that, act, that bill is very comprehensive on issues to coordination. Like, for example, if it's a state agency or a non-state agency, who should monitor them, yeah. you know? So as a matter of, like, fa we need to fast track that bill mm -hmm. so that it can be a law. And then number two, coordination. Mm -hmm. Because right now we have issues in the children's sector because we don't know who does what. Like now we have, the, now we have Child Welfare Society. Yes. They, have, we, they obviously have issues. Mm -hmm. We have the National Council for Children's Services that feel they don't have enough power to call, off, call out injustices like this. We have Department of Children's Services that don't have money. You know, that, that's the sad bit of it. Mm -hmm. They are all over the country, but they don't have the money to do that. We have the Street Families Trust. Luckily, yeah. something was done the other day. Yeah. But we do not have that coordination. So when you, for example, when you ask, who is responsible of these children? Mm -hmm. They will tell you, uh, you know, Department of Children's Services is supposed to rescue them. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Child welfare is supposed to stay with them. No, 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 no. It's the same child. But we don't have the person who is the who is coordinates these services. Yes. So something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And then we have a very strong, which is a very progressive policy of non deinstitutionalization, yeah. where institution is the last cause of result. Mm -hmm. So, but now we we you're, you're seeing that like, there's so many institutions. Like now, one billion was allocated in the budget <laughs> that to to build. Children, they call it foster homes. Yeah, foster we call them homes. glorified children's homes. Mm. When we have a policy that's saying institutions are not good for children, mm -hmm. so we need money allocated to where it is needed, yes. like ending violence against children. Give it, like, because right now the violence against children is on the rise. Yeah. The number of girls who are being cut is on the rise. The number of girls who are, are being married early is on the rise. Yeah. Sexual abuse is on the rise. Mm -hmm. why, allocate, why don't we allocate money where it's needed? Mm -hmm. Have specialized treatment centers, support families with children with disability instead Absolutely. of having those institutions. The fact children thrive well, as he has said, children thrive well, well even with disability. We're in a family environment. Right. Why not have a social protection system mm -hmm. that gives extra care for families like that so that children can be able to stay at home mm -hmm. with their families? Absolutely. It's, um, and it's pretty sad that in this country, while we're talking about the, these, some of these agencies not having money, mm -hmm. the thing is that money is allocated, yes. but it just doesn't trickle down to them. Yes the people who need yeah. said money. Now, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Zulu, when, if I were to drop you into that particular institution, where would you start? 
Now, it will depend. Okay, my first degree is law. Yes. Then I have, I'm doing PhD in psychology. Yes. So if you have sent me there as a lawyer, I'll mm -hmm. be looking at the legal systems. Yeah. But if I've gone there as a psychologist, mm -hmm. my practice is psychology. I have mm -hmm. a clinic. I see uh, patients. I see clients. Right. As a psychologist, I will sense the emotional environment. Okay. Because I want you to register this. Human beings are not basically creatures of logic. No. But basically, creatures of emotion. Uh, yes. We remember feelings more than we remember ideas. Leo, na kukutana na mtu. It's many years since we met them, yeah. and a feeling comes on you <laughs> that was last. The last they caused on you. You can't remember the facts. You don't remember the details. Yeah. But if they made you laugh, the happiness comes. Mm -hmm. If they made you feel sick, you, the you sickness get, yeah. comes. Watoto wako hivyo. Have you noticed that uh, I told a person ukitaka kujua mtu kama ni friendly angalia mm -hmm. kikuja nyumbani vile mtoto na mbwa wana Wana respond. react. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Ukiona mtu anaogopa na mbwa mm. hata wewe mtoroke. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> because yeah. children, because they are limited in verbal communication, they are very sensitive they sense in the emotional energy and, um, yeah. cues. Uh -huh. And when I train people about emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. one step is go back to your childlike functioning. Uh -huh. Because you paid a lot of attention to miniature expressions. Facial. We have become careless about body language because we can interpret with words. Mm -hmm. When you don't have many words, mm -hmm. you depend on cues. Yes. We look at the mother's face, we look yes. at the person's expression. Mm -hmm. when, I, when you drop me to a place where kids need attention, yeah. um, and I told you I was specialized on what we have day to day, our homes, the homes we came from. Yes. We have children there. Right. And, and I should tell you that some kids have a, a comfortable bed, uh -huh. but they don't have love. Mother Teresa said mm -hmm. that many people are suffering, are starving, not from bread, but from love. Mm -hmm. You have heard of the cry that the boy child, you know, the boy child is failing and all that. And I asked people, is it the boy child or the boy father? Yeah. <laughs> Who started the problem? Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> fish rots from the head. I think when you go somewhere, when you go to a home or to a children's home, to a rescue center or to an institution, yeah. uh, I did my practical, my PhD practicum in one of the rescue centers. And mm -hmm. I was happy for them because they have a parental. What she has said is, it's better to support the family where the child comes from Rather than, than to, to pluck the child. Mm -hmm. Because here they will not have sufficient attachment. There are 20 of them and a one caregiver or even 200. Yeah. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. they cannot attach. It's mm -hmm. not a family setting. You know, Quavo, I want to encourage uh, all the parents to check at the environment or the, the emotional environment at home. Yeah. Mutoto wana feel loved. Mm -hmm. And how do you find out? Sikia ye mwenye vila anasema. Mm -hmm. Vila anambia wenzake. Right. Kuna mutoto waliambia nyumbani, watoto wakianza kunzumuza vile waliambia na babaki na mamake, ea analia. Kwa sababu next, watamuliza na wewe tuambia yako. <laughs> Maya ana story, yeah. baba na kuja too late, na yeah. wana fight na mami. They only uh -huh. hear chaos. Uh -huh. You know? And kids, they, 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 they start blaming themselves. I'll mm. tell you about the psychology of children. Children are egocentric. The yeah. world revolves around them. What sure. was as we kipigana has a fikiri ni shidaza on a fikiri yeye yeah, sama yeah, yeah. wa ah, Okay. Was as we were doing kwamba sometimes people say we do not we stayed together for the children. They would have gone separate ways. It would have not been for better for But them. even when they stayed, they still hurt the children. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, it's about the emotional environment. That's mm -hmm. what I'll be concerned about. about. Be it an institution or a home. Mm -hmm. Do children feel loved or rejected? Okay. Do they feel celebrated or? You know, you know, tolerated. Mm. You know, mm. na naitwa tujina. <laughs> Moja akaitwa nyoka kama mamako. Oh Akaambiwa, mimi nilizaliwa na nyoka na wewe ulioa nyoka. Nani yako pabaya zaidi? Oh my goodness. Yeah. That would definitely scar one for life. <laughs> yeah. No, and and also it projects on the kind of generations then we have in the future because you look even at the current situation, the trending topics about South Africa and the rape mm. culture that is there. Yes. This definitely you would imagine would start from a young age how you socialize kids. Quick mathematics. When did yes. they get the independence? Mm, 1994. The kids were born 1994. How mm. old are they now? Mm -hmm. They are millennials. Yes. Then, yeah very quickly to see that those kids are now early 20s uh -huh. and they were born during that time of oppression yes and when their parents were suddenly released by the mzungu and all that eh, they may not have quickly put systems of bringing up their kids mm -hmm. what happens is how we are treating the children today we are actually writing down mm -hmm. what we, what shall happen to our country yeah. Kuna let me write the music of a country and i don't care who writes the laws mm -hmm. because the music tells you about the emotional state where we are in oh, have yeah. you noticed how we are celebrating <laughs> violent music yes how many of you have read the constitution but we all know yes. it should be banned <laughs> from public but yeah. you don't study constitution we love the music because yeah. it's emotional yes. the point is how we are immersing our children into hate or rejection right. and my mommy was too busy making money mm -hmm. you know when we get money what we do we use the money to replace us 
in the in the children's we give them a lot of pocket money so that they don't bother us na mtoto anaanza ku learn oh kwa hiyo there is anaingia kwa drugs anaanza kutafuta pleasure kwa hiyo and all that ama akikosea ndio huwa anaanza kumzungumzia kwa hiyo ana learn kwamba i only get attention when i do wrong and subconsciously I start doing those wrong, wrong things na wazazi wanaanza kusema kizazi cha siku hizi naomba kabla utaje kizazi zungumzia wazazi yesterday yeah it's quite true it will dictate the future we are heading to now miss kaberi Do you think there's enough information out there about the needs of children, the loopholes that we have and even just the psychological needs or the things we need to do to actually ensure that the children we are raising are bring us a future generation that will be beneficial to everybody? Uh, honestly no. Mm. I don't think we have enough information and and that, that you, you just go through your timeline without even scrolling a lot. You yeah. see how misinformed people are about children, mm. about what children need because you know for for a child to thrive yeah. you, you don't have to start from the day they are born it's mm-hmm. before they are born mm-hmm. uh, even be preconception before that that parent or mother they think about how what is their mis- emotional well-being yes. and then as a the child develops into the early childhood you mm-hmm. know uh, how what what kind of foundation are you giving that to, to that child yes. because uh, la- last week I was somewhere and there was this research was was released as from actually here in CIA yeah. that shows there's a the very close correlation between a mother's mental well-being and yes. a child true Absolutely. so mm-hmm. how a child is going to come out depends highly on how that parent is you know mm-hmm. is that is this parent stressed you know is that pa- parent uh, grounded yeah. you know or is that parent feeling abused so that will be projected into the child and you know what that causes a cycle you yes. know because the child grows up mm-hmm. and then when they become parents themselves mm-hmm. they, it beca- they they it it comes out again mm-hmm. so it's how are we bringing up our children yeah. depends on how how, how, how the parents are, are how the society yeah. is mm-hmm. you know like um if you go to south africa mm-hmm. people are angry extremely on angry. behalf of their parents yeah yeah, yeah. They, they didn't go through apartheid themselves they did not but they are angry because and because they don't have white people to 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 release Lash their anger to yeah. they are releasing to other africans who mm-hmm. feel their emotions yeah. you know it's only that if they were given the opportunity to yeah. to do this to the apartheid people they would, they would. but it's over but, so but it's, yeah. any foreigner who yeah, they are the ones like who are going to be from us. They, they are being ah, it's, it's so, quite the cycle actually. yeah so it's a cycle yeah. and ca- can you imagine the kids who are going to grow up from these millennials right. are going to be the same mm. so it's, it's someone has to do what rwanda they did let's have a national conversation mm-hmm. you know uh, about this and the same, same thing with Kenya yeah you will not every 10 years mm-hmm. every 7 with a 777 mm-hmm. there is a violence it's because these kids were they were <laughs> brought when, during the time they were growing up yeah. there was there was some form of violence yeah. so they grew up oh so during elections it's normal to have violence to have, yeah, so let's start fighting with mm-hmm. each other it has nothing to do with politics it all has to do with with emotion and psychology mm-hmm. and what children were brought up saying and, and that's a form yeah. of socialization yes, yes, so it's, it's the important thing is to break the cycle yes. and of course that um, saying that goes happy mom Happy, happy happy child, child. Yeah. yes so we need to take care of ourselves and remember that the things we're putting we the, they witness in us is what they'll probably be replicating yeah. in their future you agree with this i agree and so moving forward as, when we look at kids in our society as well as kids in institutions as we wind up mm-hmm. tell us what would be the solution for a nation that is looking to have a better future um let me put it in an individual level mm. a few steps as a mother before you get a child plan the environment they'll find uh-huh. you should not get a child when you're just having fun with your boyfriend and mm. you're hoping it won't go too far <laughs> and yeah. i have had many people contact me and uh, my facebook is zulu benjamin yes. my email is zulu benjamin at gmail mm-hmm. i'll be very happy to discuss with a person who wants to plan their lives. Right. So the best child is a child whom you embrace and take responsibility for. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. it's everybody's job to ensure it is. Uh, yeah, you mentioned that earlier. It's everyone's job mm-hmm. to ensure that the future of our children is There's mm-hmm. that book that was says it take, takes a village to mm-hmm. grow a child and mm-hmm. I'm saying it takes a nation. It Start takes a with nation. your own mm-hmm. and then the child sometimes you have to parent children who are not yours. You have yeah. to father children who are not yours. Yeah. I'm mentoring many young men. Mm-hmm. It is responsibility of all of us. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your sentiments on this a very big topic We're go on on the discussion online if you haven't watched the lead take a look and find out what's happening to our society's children especially those who do not have caregivers but for now let's take a short break when we come back international news will be waiting for you